Hi guys, it is getting to be a hot, sticky summer day here in the end times in my new paradise in, of West Bumblefuck, New Mexico, here on this sultry summer day, Thursday, June 8th, 2017. I'm hiding out in the cool shadows of the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, bringing you this week's, this week's never-ending dump the Trump the Hive Roundup rant, where I simply open up the pages of the mainstream media to see the various ways uh, and examples of why we need to get rid of this motherfucker. It is time to put an end to this dog and pony show. Uh, good God Almighty. It is this fucking nightmare that we have stepped into this pile of shit that we have stepped into uh, as a country by, by putting this fucking jackass uh, up there as, as our president. Anyway, but uh, before I, I step into the pages of the mainstream media, I'm going to set you down. And no barking, please. No barking. He's on the warpath of some rat, as we all are. Talk about warpath against a fucking rat. We, we need to put Sancho Panza on the case to flesh this fucking disease-ridden rodent uh, out of the White House. A anyway, but before I go into the mainstream media, I just really enjoyed this, uh, this article from the alternative media here on Alternet. Uh, <coughs> the subject near and dear probably to more than <coughs> a couple of tribes members here and it's talking about, hilariously enough, how the Donald Trump re presidency is actually killing the doomsday prepper uh, survivalist business that these, you know, uh, how many times have I said the, the, one, the, the one golden the silver lining of the dark cloud of uh, Donald Trump is the fact that Donald Trump, more than any man in history, can bring, is the man for the job to bring a global industrial civilization down to a crashing halt. You know, so on that level, your old ego Nazi is cheering this motherfucker on. But what's hilarious about this it is why I and anyone else with a brain uh, understand that Donald Trump has brought global industrial civilization closer to the edge of the abyss than any human being in history. These goddamn clueless fucking moron right-wing uh, survivalist uh, doomsday preppers, you know, always talking about Obama and Hillary. They're coming to get our guns! They're coming to get our guns! <coughs> so now that, that Hillary has been fucked out of the White House, uh, guess what? All of these doomsday preppers are saying, what collapse of global industrial civilization? Yes. During, uh, during Barack Obama's presidency, conservative doomsday peddlers cashed in on the paranoia they helped spread, selling firearms, prepper food, and survivalist gear to the followers uh, they convinced the end was near. <clears throat> but now, these apocalypse hucksters are facing a dilemma in the form of Donald Trump. <coughs> while most of these clueless fucking morons enthusiastically supported Trump's presidential run, some even hailing him as a savior. 
the Trump presidency has been damaging to their bottom lines. Gun sales, for example, have nosedived now that far-right activists can no longer claim that Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton is this close to getting your guns and rounding up gun owners and throwing them in FEMA camps. There, uh, this is uh, Michael Snyder, a conservative pundit and prepper, uh, writes, quote, sales of emergency food and supplies have been crashing since Donald Trump's surprise election victory. In fact, it is like a nuclear bomb went off in the prepping community. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> that, uh, th this story, I, no barking. This story is so hilarious on so many sick, twisted, ironic levels. I almost uh, thought of doing an entire rant on it. How these clueless fucking morons acting like Barack Obama what was a bigger threat uh, to the global industrial society than Donald Trump. Uh, I guess this will show back up in my clueless moron roundup rant. But before I get into the regular headlines, let's just go, this is really a, probably only the one eco-Nazi headline out there before we, we get in the ways we can get rid of this fucker. You know, this is, I guess, the UN is having some sort of save the ocean conference this week, how the United Nations, the single biggest threat to the oceans on this planet, well, outside of Donald Trump, are coming up with ways to save the oceans. Uh, how is Donald Trump and his band of horsemen of the apocalypse how are they helping the United Nations save the oceans? <clears throat> Trump administration could permit oil companies to assault marine life. Experts say seismic testing to find drill sites could harm thousands of animals and affect coastal communities. The Trump administration took a major step forward on Monday in its pledge to expand offshore oil and gas drilling in the Atlantic Ocean by greenlighting a process that could wreak havoc on marine life and coastal communities, scientists say. Uh, the National Marine Fisheries Service, under Donald Trump's uh, administration, drafted five <clears throat> incidental harassment authorizations, <laughs> which would let five drilling companies, quote, injure or disturb, injure or disturb, otherwise known as blow the eardrums out of. I guess having your eardrum, eardrums blown out of the side of your head, that counts as an injury or a disturbance. Uh, we let five drilling companies injure or disturb fish and marine mammals as the companies search for oil and gas deposits off the east coast. Uh, seismic surveying involves mapping fossil fuel reserves deep beneath the ocean's surface by firing extremely loud bursts of compressed air through the water. These blasts can travel hundreds of miles and occur every 10 to 12 seconds for weeks or even months. There you go. This is uh, Donald Trump literally declaring war against whales, dolphins, sea turtles, 
and the ocean and the planet. <clears throat> but anyway, let's get back to the dump the Trump dehive to some uh, some some pipe dreams, some ham bone pipe dreams. Here is Donald Trump quote will find a way to resign says president's ghost writer. You know a ghost writer is someone who actually writes a book and then puts the the, the clueless fucking moron who can't string 140 characters together in a tweet without making a bunch of grammatical errors. Uh, anyway, that's that's what a a uh, ghost writer is. Dumps dumps. That's just called Donald Trump. We're just going to call him Dump. I think that's a great name. Dumps Ghost Rider claims the president will find a way to resign so that he avoids looking like he is losing. This is Tony Schwartz who ghost wrote uh, Trump's The Art of the Deal uh, book said that the controversial president will claim victory by resigning before he is impeached. <clears throat> Talking to CNN, the fake news network, quote, he lacks empathy, the ability to really connect with other people, self-awareness, and above all, a conscience. There is no right and wrong. There is only winning and losing. And right now, he is in pure terror that he is going to lose. And by the way, he is going to lose. I surely believe that at some point, he is going to have to figure out a way to resign. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> now this next article from Forbes, it's too, uh, th this is kind of a convoluted article coming out of Forbes magazine. I guess Forbes magazine is no longer the Donald Trump supporter they used to be. From Forbes magazine, how Donald Trump shifted kids' cancer charity money into his own business. That's it, Sarah. Uh, this, uh, it, 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 anyway, guys, this is too, this is too complicated. It would take me two hours to try to untangle the, uh, the tangled web that Donald Trump, uh, had to go through to finagle away to funnel a bunch of money from a from a charity claiming it was sending money to kids to fight children's cancer to pad his own pockets. Uh, let's see. It's clear. Uh, uh, it, it, anyway, guys, I wish I could. Uh, let, let me just dive into in the middle of this with no backstory. The Donald Trump Foundation, which has come under previous scrutiny for self-dealing and advancing the interests of its namesake rather than those of charity, apparently used his son's Eric Trump Foundation to funnel $100,000 in kids' cancer charity no donations into revenue for the Trump Organization. And while donors to the Eric Trump Foundation were told their money was going to help six sick kids, more than $500,000 of that was was redonated to other charities, many of which were connected to Trump family members or interests. All of this seems to defy federal tax rules and state laws that ban self-dealing 
and misleading donors. It also raises larger questions about the Trump family dynamics and whether Eric and his brother Donald Jr. can be truly independent of their father, especially since the person who specifically commanded that the for-profit Trump organization start billing hundreds of thousands of dollars to the non-profit Prophet Eric Trump Foundation, according to two people directly involved, was none other than the current President of the United States. Okay, uh, let's look at, at how people are just falling all over themselves to go to work for Donald Trump. Here is four, <coughs> damn it, <coughs> the dust of the collapse of global industrial civilization. <coughs> Here is four top law firms turned down requests to represent Trump. Top lawyers with at least four major law firms rebuffed White House overtures to represent President Trump in the Russia investigations in part over concerns that the president would be unwilling to listen to their advice, according to five sources familiar with discussions about the matter. The unwillingness of some of the country's most prestigious attorneys and their law firms to represent Trump has complicated the administration's efforts to mount a coherent defense strategy to deal with probes being conducted by four congressional committees as well as the Justice Department investigation. Let's see, and here is nobody wants to work for Donald Trump because he is, quote, crazy, senior Republican says. This is Michael Steele, a senior member of the uh, U.S. President's Republican Party, says that Donald Trump is struggling to find new staff to work for him because everyone thinks he is crazy. Hush. Uh, quote, the talent pool is shrinking because who wants to sign up for crazy? Nobody wants to step into a situation where you're flying by the seat of your pants and don't know whether what you just said will hold up from one news cycle to the next. Nobody is going to be lining up for positions with that much uncertainty. <laughs> Let's go look from, as long as we're talking about uh, nobody else being crazy enough to go to work with this insane motherfucker. Let's go peer inside Donald Trump's own brain. <clears throat> Donald Trump's mental health quote, keeps getting worse, Washington insiders claim. <clears throat> Concerns over Donald Trump's mental status are taking hold in Washington and the media. Blah, blah, blah. Re reporters and television news program pundits have been diving into comments from sources close to the president that speak to his mental health and mood in a way that has not been done with other presidents. However, recent news about Mr. Trump is also somewhat unprecedented. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm just going to look. Uh, anyway, here is... Carl Bernstein, the legendary 
journalist who uncovered the Watergate scandal argued that reporting on Mr. Trump's mental fitness is valid. Quote, we have many reporters, myself included, who have talked to numerous people, Republicans on Capitol Hill, who in private will tell you they doubt the stability of this president. Okay. Let's see. What does former U.S. Labor Secretary Robert Reich, of course, he was Labor Secretary under Bill Clinton. Donald Trump, quote, well, not exactly quote, paraphrase, Donald Trump is a sociopath and I fear he is losing his mind. A former U.S. cabinet member said he fears Donald Trump is, quote, losing his mind and argues it is time to consider his removal of office. Robert Reich, who is now a professor of public policy at Berkeley, argues that it is, quote, now time to seriously consider the 25th Amendment to the Constitution, which provides for removal of a president who is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. I fear the man is losing his mind. <clears throat> D, D, D. Now, of course, we all know what today is. It's probably happening right now is the day when James Comey is going to get up there and testify. So, of course, yesterday, everyone trying to figure out, is James Comey going to be the guy to bring down this motherfucker? Let's all cheer on James Comey today. Uh, so this was the news as of last night. James Comey confirms Trump tried to make him drop probe into Michael Flynn's Russia ties and pledge loyalty. <laughs> the former FBI director James Comey will confirm reports that Donald Trump put pressure on him to drop inquiries related to an ongoing investigation into Russia's meddling in the 2016 election, according to a prepared testimony released uh, yesterday. Uh, Comey's prepared testimony appears to confirm past reports based on his memo um, that the former FBI director wrote following interactions with the president. Anyway, we'll hear more than we ever wanted to hear about that. But you probably, if you haven't heard this, this is always good for a chuckle. James Comey reportedly asked Jeff Sessions not to leave him alone with Trump. Following a one-on-one -on -one meeting where President Trump asked former FBI Director James Comey to drop the investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, Comey told Attorney General Jeff Sessions he never wanted to be left alone with Trump ever again. Uh, Comey pulled, according to uh, a bunch of people in the New York Times, a bunch of sources, Comey pulled Sessions aside and told him that he felt several of his private interactions with Trump had been inappropriate. I anyway, I can't blame that man. Uh, w would you want to be left alone? with Donald Trump. I, I don't like being in the same fucking country 
with Donald Trump. I don't enjoy being on the same planet with Donald Trump. Uh, well, probably uh, one of my worst nightmares would be, would be to be locked in the room with Donald Trump. Could you imagine? Uh, I mean, it sounds like a fucking Twilight Zone episode. Well, uh, this whole fucking country is, is in a Twilight Zone episode that even the madman genius of Rod Serling could never have scripted uh, this descent into madness from Donald Trump uh, right on through this entire fucking country. As long as we're talking about uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, will Trump fire Jeff Sessions? President fuming over Attorney General Report says, well, I understand that Jeff Sessions has already offered to resign. I, I think it's a pretty safe bet at this point, guys, that, that either the fucker is going to resign or Trump's going to fire him. <clears throat> the question is, who the fuck is going to fire Donald Trump <coughs> if he doesn't resign? If, if, Je if Jeff Sessions has a fucking brain in his body, he'll get the fuck out of that goddamn uh, loony bin in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And uh, it's not just uh, Jeff Sessions. It, it, it's, it's the whole kit and caboodle of them. Uh, you really should go look at a few minutes of this testimony uh, from these poor schmucks uh, you know, getting grilled uh, by these congressional investigations. Here is national security officials duck questions on conversations with Trump. Top national security officials dodged questions from a Senate investigative committee Wednesday as to whether they were asked by President Trump to intervene in the FBI's probe into whether Trump campaign associates colluded with Russia to influence the 2016 election. Any, anyway, uh, this is an article uh, talking about uh, Trump's Twitter. Uh, you know, several articles. Before I get into this, uh, here's just one in many reports looking at these goddamn Donald Trump tweets as just further evidence that the man has lost his fucking mind. As Sean Spicer, uh, that spineless little patsy, just says, you can consider Donald Trump's official, Trump's tweets, uh, official White House uh, communications. And uh, I enjoyed this one. Legal experts to Trump on travel ban, Twitter hurting his own calls. Uh, that's exactly what it's doing. But anyway, I, I, there's many uh, stories on it, but this is my particular favorite coming out of the Guardian newspaper by a fellow named Mustafa Bayoumi. I'm going to take a wild guess that Mustafa is one of them Muslims. <clears throat> Trump's Twitter attacks on London Mayor Sadiq Khan reveal how pitiful the president is. Take it away, Mustafa. How long can we keep watching this endless car crash that is Donald Trump's presidency? The world has pressing problems to solve from climate change to global terrorism, but instead of contributing resources and wisdom from the United States, Trump relentlessly gets in the way of solutions and exacerbates the problems, all the while 
turning our shared tragedies into his own spectacles. We should not be passive onlookers to Trump's pantomime presidency any longer. It is time we learn how to read Trump more judiciously, if only to learn how to deal with him better. And then he goes in to uh, Trump's Twitter attack against London Mayor Sadiq Khan, the Muslim Sadiq Khan, after the, the bombing last week. Uh, let's see, uh, but I'm going to skip ahead to the bigger picture. Um, by after he goes through that, by focusing less on Trump's personal reasons for his behavior and more on the political motivations for his actions, we can easily discern something crucial. The mounting evidence since January 20th shows that Trump's notion of leadership revolves around creating a politics of unreasonably low expectations so that any measure of near adult behavior by the man will be seen as remarkable or even presidential while his hopes abound that the normal methods of judging legislators will fade from view and his churlish use of Twitter is a case in point. Tr Trump's, uh, Trump's tweets are not merely 140 character misses, missives of questionable spelling and intelligence. Whether we like it or not, they are also official pronouncements of the President of the United States. And as such, Trump's tweets in form and content effectively lower our expectations of what presidential communication should both look like and contain. There's more. Trump's own statements so often contradict his own stated policy goals that his administration's motto might as well be, yes, we can't. Uh, let's see, let's get to the very bottom of this spot-on analysis. Quote, Trump's style is turning out to be less post-modern post fascism and more just old-school narcissism. He will clearly sacrifice the rest of us, starting with them Muslims, in his tireless campaign to put himself always at the crumbling center of things. They say you will never cure a narcissist. All you can do is ignore him. If only we could. And I just had to wind up this, uh, this week's uh, dump the Trump the High Roundup rant with this knee, knee slapper. Donald Trump offers to broker resolution to Gulf diplomatic crisis. This is Donald Trump offering to broker a crisis by a bunch of them Muslims in a fight. There, there, there you go. That's somewhat like uh, Sancho Panza offering to broker a fight between a mouse and a chipmunk. President Donald Trump has offered to personally broker a resolution to the Persian Gulf's escalating diplomatic crisis as both he and Qatar look past his pointed suggestion only a day earlier that the tiny gas-rich nation enable, enables terrorism. But the, the uh, every bit as hilarious 
is Donald Trump uh, making the offer. We have uh, Qatar's U.S. ambassador, that Muslim Michelle bin Hamid Al Tami, uh, told the Associated Press his country is counting on Washington, meaning Donald Trump, to persuade Saudi Arabia and others to back down. Quoting Alfani, we have great confidence in the president's ability to calm this crisis and to resolve it. Anyway, yes, let's all get Donald Trump to resolve a crisis among them Muslims. I, I can only imagine where Donald Trump, the great arbiter of peace among warring Muslims, is going to take us. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up this, uh, this week's version of my Dump the Trump the High Roundup rant because I hear there's some great deals in all of these doomsday prepper stores on bulk food and uh, whatever else. So I'm off to shop for the coming apocalypse. And I suggest you do the same, thanks to Donald Trump. Bye, guys.